update for Monday, May 18th, 2020. The stock market happened today. It went up almost a thousand points. It crushed it. Um, let's talk about who won, who lost, and just the rumblings of so many things going on at once. Um, so if you pay attention to the markets or the commentary about them, you would have heard today there was a lot of comments. Oh, Moderna came out and talked about a vaccine that's showing promise in early stages. And even though it's something that wouldn't be in production until 2021, apparently that rallied markets today and everything went crazy because there's all this positive. We're opening back up again. There's hope. Um, and I'm not to say that there's not hope. There's definitely hope. But the Moderna announcement, while awesome, I love mRNA, actually. Let's look them up. Let's look them up. Let's grab them. Let's throw, let's throw them as number one. M-R-N-A. Moderna, they went up like 30-some, yeah, 20-some percent today because they're also selling more stock. They do have a great way of potentially, yeah, I mean, my note was like solid vaccine candidate, long way to go, though. And that was um, spring of 2020. Well, wow, I wrote this, by the way, not today. I wrote that note like probably a week ago. Um, before the announcement today. And I haven't bought their stock. And I mean, I, I love what they're doing. I love that they were a huge gainer today. Um, I love everything about it. Uh, I've listened to the interview with Stefan, I think the CEO of the guy, French, French accent, but spoke very good English. And um, yeah, my note is from the no, actually, my note is from today. Never mind. I guess I did do that today. But um, the point is, is that the reason why uh, I, I, I hesitate on this and look is, is if you look at their financials, even though that they could potentially have a lot of business for the vaccine and stuff, they, they only had like $30 million in revenue last year. And their whole thing is going to be vaccine development. And while this COVID situation is bringing everything to the standstill, just the vaccine is not necessarily going to be all that profitable of a venture. It may keep them running, but it may not profit them all that much because it needs to get out to everyone and cost becomes something that we all want to absorb because there's a herd quality to us having everybody vaccinated or as much as we can because in terms of who will spread it and all that, all that externality effect on all of us. So this is all way overblown way 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 overblown and they're no they're not worth this they're they're small but and there's going to be a lot of other vaccines simultaneously going on like this is the thing i think by the time by next year when the vaccines start rolling out and i think there are going to be different versions of them um because they're going to, we're going to be in the middle of testing stuff that usually takes years to test and we're going to do it in less than a year so we're going to learn things as we go we're just going to kind of accept it because staying at home is not okay that they're going to have actually competitors in the vaccine industry. They're just in the middle of stage one. This isn't going to happen until next year at the earliest. I mean, if they get approved by the end of the year by the FDA, that's insane. Probably won't be until next year, just in the nature of how you have to do it. So what are you buying here? You're buying a company that is going to solve a problem a year from now. Well, we have the problem now. And, and even though the market went crazy and went up today, and all these things went up a, a huge day. Even a lot of energy, gas. Here's another vaccine company, Novavax, that went up today, also like 30%. Um, they got a grant to do a vaccine. There's going to be vaccines everywhere. We all realize this is a massive, massive issue, right? Well, what about what's going on right now? Look at this, Rick's Hospitality. That, that's strip clubs, gentlemen's clubs. That's the, yeah. I mean, everything's going up that you think would go back to normal today. This is all overblown and way too early because even though things might start getting back to normal, normal, normal that we think about when we're all vaccinated, because once we're all vaccinated, it's the same world we were living in before. We just have a new shot that we get, that our kids get or whatever, right? It's like, it's like the new smallpox or polio. We eradicate it. We go back to being normal. That actually sounds like something that we're going to be able to do as humans that makes a lot of sense. But that doesn't happen until a vaccine, because if you still get sick before the vaccine over the next year, you got to have treatment options. Well, what are the treatment options? This is where I have the stocks that I pay attention to 
and the ones that I purchase and say to buy and how they did today. So instead of instead of Moderna, because I didn't buy Moderna and I won't buy them because I think that long term they're not a good financial buy in the market, I still have Tesla up here instead. Now, these are the stocks I care about. You can see almost all of the top 10 went up except for I guess Wendy's and Merck, and I will talk about Merck because Merck is my potential solution to what do we do in the intermediate before the vaccines arrive. And that is one of the treatment options. It's not, it's not hydrochloroquine, although some people can use hydrochloroquine with um, vimatidine, which is what Pepsid is made out of that Merck has. Um, vimatidine is the one that they're still testing right now and potentially they're gonna see if that's something that could be used as a treatment uh, that will mop up the virus essentially and bond to like a protease or some area of the virus and render it unable to, you know, we flood it, we bond to it so that it can't get into the ACE2 receptor or the other cells that cause problems. So th that that's the one I've been, had my eye on and why I think Merck will go up when more information gets out about that as the studies are completed over the next few months, um, weeks and months. So they went down slightly, right? They never really go down a ton because they're a really good biotech, you know, pharmaceutical company. But I do think the news is eventually going to break and it's going to be positive for formatidine. And then we will start testing ourselves all the time. And then if we get exposure to it or have some symptoms, we'll bust out a, like, you'll go to the, the urgent care and they'll just give you an injection of formatidine into your veins and monitor you for like 24 or 40 hours, maybe give you a couple doses over two days or something like that. And it shouldn't be that expensive because it's a generic drug already. And if it works, it mops up the virus or at least gives your immune system a weird type of boost by, by neutralizing the virus in your system because the shape of the fematidine improperly bonds or you know disrupts the virus or latches onto it, causes it not to work right. So that that's why i always have merck on here and i'm just sitting around waiting until we're, we all, all get the go ahead to try to start treat our <laughs> to be treating ourselves with pepsi essentially um even though that's not medical advice and don't listen to it as such but it is a, a potential road that we're going down because the tests are going on so anyway um that's why i have them on here tesla because they're they're the company of the future and and we should be we should be and we will be rolling around in electric vehicles that have batteries that are costing less to charge and ranges that will go further than a current tank of gas at some point. He's going to start pulling that off. Musk is, is going to start pulling out batteries that are going to have like 500,000 mile ranges and they're they're going to charge in under half an hour and there's just all kinds of cool stuff that's coming. Um, it's just going in that direction. So this is the, they have Tesla solar too. You can put solar roof on your house, charge your car. You never go to the gas station. You never pay for electricity. Welcome to the 21st century. It's this. It's not, it's not oil. It's not, I mean, what happens when we flip this around and said, who did terrible today? Well, yeah, JCPenney's going out of business. Bonzo Electronics, there's probably another brick and mortar. Revenue dropped the last few years. Advantage Technology, didn't look up that stuff yet. Overstock down. I remember I keep complaining about Overstock if you watch these videos. I'm like, I don't know what's up with Overstock. I don't trust them. They're up on the top. 10% one day and then they're down and then they're up and then they're up and they're down. It's like, what is up with them? Why are their swings so wild? I need to stay away. And there you go, down 11% today. Genmark Diagnostics, Molecule Diagnostics, good idea to watch. Public offering at nine. Oh yeah, they got a public offering thing. They lowered their own share. I think that's what happened. So that's an interesting thing because they sold shares at a fixed price, which will bring your current price down. I think that's probably what happened there. So they, they may not be in trouble. Actually, usually if you're selling more shares and you're actually selling them, there's a good reason because you have a reason to invest. Um, a bank is down here. I don't see any oil down here. So if we look at what happened, I don't really want to look at the oil sector, but I know that there's this energy and all this stuff up here. So oil got a bump today because people started thinking maybe we're going to go back to normal which we will eventually, but what will that normal be? Have we started to get the picture that riding our bikes around in the middle of the day, which is everyone seems to be going out and buying bicycles from what I hear, so weather gets nice, it, you know, doing that has a different impact on our lives than driving around in rush hour traffic. 
I mean, I can think of, I, I was, you know, grew up around the Washington DC area and there's a bubble around DC, which is the, the DC Metro DMV, they call it, right? There's the suburbs outside DC, where if you work in DC, you got to get up at six in the morning and you got to do an hour or an hour and change commute to go 20 miles, whether you're driving or driving to a Metro or doing whatever. It's that busy city commute and it's, it's gross, it's taxing, it's exhausting, and it's, it's wasteful. It's wasteful of time. Um, th w w this virus has caused us all to say, oh my God, what would have to happen if we couldn't commute and couldn't do those things, let alone whether or not we wanted to. And it just feels as though there's an air of, oh my God, there are some things I really like about having a flexibility to not have to physically be in a certain place all the time for work. And we all got pushed into this in one way. Now, how do we take advantage of this and really make structural changes to society so that we live healthier lives, more productive lives, more rewarding lives, because the old way of doing things kind of got thrown out the window. And the companies that you see on here are a mix of companies that I think take us in the right direction and also things that we need to eat, we need to shop. And tech companies that have been bringing us forward for years that now have, have us as a captive audience in front of our computers or in front of our devices all the time. And what are they going to do with our time and with our information? Notice I don't have Facebook on this list. I might get Twitter on this list at one point for, for different reason, but I don't have Facebook on here. I don't even have a Facebook account anymore. I deleted it uh, at least a year ago, like a year and a half or more. And um, I don't like what Facebook does with our information and, and how Facebook seems to perpetuate problems. I don't get that vibe from Google. Google wants to solve problems. Microsoft helps you solve problems, helps you create. Facebook allows you to share and takes advantage of you. And I don't want that on here. I'd rather get a coffee at Dunkin' Donuts because they got a drive through and they have a Beyond Sausage Burger. Um, <laughs> I'd rather get tested for the antibodies or the virus so I know what my status is, so I know how I'm going to react if I get exposed, or at least have a better idea how I'm going to react if I get exposed. Um, I want more drive through fast food. I like Impossible Burger. I like plant protein burger that for some reason I'm not scared of getting virus, viral pathogens in, um, at least not as much as eating meat. Um, I also, as much as I love human beings, I also hate dealing with them when I know that their breaths or my breath could be incubating virus. So I want to touch screens instead. A screen is much easier to clean. A screen is much easier to understand what's going on. A screen, to, screen doesn't complain to you when you take too long. It actually asks you, are you like, do you want to complete this order? Do you cancel? Are you still here? Still paying attention? And I'm like, yeah, no, I'm an idiot. I'm blind. And I, I'm trying to figure out what I want to eat. I don't know if I want a rice bowl. I, like, I love that I can make my own. I don't have to talk to someone and say, I'd like lettuce with salsa, but don't give me the hot salsa. Give me the mouth. So I actually get to look at it, choose it. The screen provides that. LSI Industries up 7.5% today because even though there was an overwhelming sentiment of things are going to get back to normal, that new normal includes more screens and more self-checkouts and more digital to human interaction. We're all getting older. We've all now had enough experience with computers. We all have a phone. We can all understand a screen. A screen can speak an infinite number of languages. A screen can totally read information about you. A screen can watch whether or not you steal stuff. A screen can do all these things now. So companies that install screens and replace people at businesses one, keep those people healthier by not having them having to work with other human beings and touch other people thousands of times a day, right? Or talk with other people thousands of times a day. Uh, a screen is better in so many ways because a screen is, isn't going to spread the virus the same way. And we can then clean the screen quite easily. That's why I kind of think we might have screens covering our faces um, until we have a vaccine sometimes. And then, of course, more fast food because it's available in their drive throughs and um, so those, those are kind of companies and things that reasons that I have them on here. 
and wait till you hear about famadidine. I think it's going to help. So let, let's wait on that. Um, Alphabet Google was up a percent, ten bucks. I mean, everybody's kind of up a little bit. Wendy's down, um, but you know they'll, they'll creep back up. That's fine. Oh, uh, what else did I want to talk about? Let's talk about the whole list that we keep track of because are there any other interesting companies to discuss? Beyond Meat down a little bit. I mean, they are kind of an interest. They're a uh, exciting company, or put it that way. They're going to have volatility, so be, be, get ready for that. I actually lowered my max purchase price to 125 on them because I didn't want to snag them yet at 130. I'm still not ready. Even though I talked myself into it on the previous video, I didn't really. Um, <laughs> Bioanalytical Systems, Verizon, Target. Yeah, Target succeeds now. So, oh yeah, let's talk about TJ Maxx also. TJ Maxx and Target. And so I had even a more spirited discussion about TJ Maxx. And once again got more, more kind of convinced that they actually do have a chance at going up here more. Um, because I also heard some news today about how they're thinking about starting to carry food. Like TJ Maxx, they realized that, well, why aren't we succeeding like Walmart and Target's charts are over the last, you know, 45 days since, since we've been in lockdown, but th certain things have been open. I don't know if TJ Maxx has been open, but I think they're open now in a lot of places because there was a lot of opening up. Another reason the market went up today was it was like, all right, there's going to be a vaccine in a year, even though they didn't really focus on the in a year part. It's going to be a vaccine. We're opening up. Uh, states are opening up. Like caseloads are going, stabilizing are going down, right? Why isn't TJ Maxx going like this, like Target is, or Walmart is? Walmart had a great day. I think Walmart's actually like at 129 right now in after hours trading or something. Like stuff's moving. Walmart's just on a roll again. Target's got raised for them everywhere. You can see. So TJ Maxx today has a good day, right? Now, they also, like people are going to want to go and physically try on clothes and want to do it at, at a place that's different than this. So they do have the chance to go up, but there isn't much room for other competitors. I was like, well, how many other places are going to stay open? And it's not a huge list for the next year because the next year it's still going to be dangerous to go out. Where I'm really thinking actually more in August we'll have a, a handle on the treatment by August, which is why September might be able to start acting a little more normal because we'll have better treatment options, even though a vaccine really isn't going to happen until next year, probably next spring, or before you can start getting vaccines out. And, and the way I'd want to get vaccines out is by putting them in the hotbed areas. You know, you're not going to have enough for – your 8 billion people on the planet or 7 billion that will need it at that point. So what you'll do is you'll, you'll where it's spreading the most is you'll hit those areas first. So it'll be like, Oh, New York's getting the vaccine first. Then, you know, Miami's getting the vaccine and LA is getting the vaccine. San Francisco, getting the, Seattle's getting the vaccine and it's going to work its way down and it's going to take a while, but doing it in that order is going to prevent further infections down the line because you're going to, cut it off at the at the hubs of where people are. So the fact that there will be vaccine shortages, first of all, there are going to be multiple companies making vaccines. So it's not just going to be one. You're going to have your option. Probably going to be trying out different vaccines and going through our trials in almost in almost a real-time way. But but you'll spread it out and and you'll work down from where the most concentration of cases are. So I wouldn't be too concerned there's going to be like a war or a fight going on about who gets it because it's going to you'll do it geographically. And and I think that that will work out properly. It'll be like cities will be fighting for it first. There's going to be that. I agree, but in terms of just people on on the ground fighting for vaccines, I don't think it's gonna gonna devolve into that. I think that we're all on top of it. And we're all focusing. So so that so there's a lot of good things that that came out today. Um. I'm going to go on forever and talk forever, and I don't really don't want to, but I, I, I'll i say this. It would be appropriate for us to, to all come together and take advantage of what's happened 
and direct our economy and direct our focus to bettering the world now rather than just going back to old ways of doing things. And so when I see something like energy, right, energy equipment and energy oil and natural gas, when you look at those sectors and you see Chesapeake Energy going up 17% today, <laughs> I think this these 15% gainers in oil and 10% gainers in oil that you're all seeing over here. This is not the direction that the world will be going long term. It's only a temporary bump to an industry that is going to be 90% replaced by alternative energy sources that are better. You're still going to need oil for certain things, but you're not going to need oil for the stuff that we use it for now, for moving around in cars. We won't need to burn coal for electricity. We'll get it from solar. We'll get it from wind or even from water power and putting, you know, water is a great source. Flowing water is an awesome source of generating electricity, running through turbines also. So all of those things can be done without burning coal. And certainly you can operate a vehicle. Elon Musk has proved that without burning gas and having all those gas and dirty oily parts. So your, your automakers that are making combustion vehicles and your oil industry, I just see it going away because it's better for all of us to go away and it's not sustainable for us to continue operating with it as it was. Um, if one thing is, another thing has occurred because of the lockdown is the, the noticeable drop in pollution and how the air is outside. I mean, I think all the people in China saw the stars for the first time between Shanghai and Wuhan because for a few weeks they were not burning coal into the air all day, every day. Apparently they're getting back to that and that sucks. Um, we should take advantage of this to, sw to switch things around, to change it. So amazing stuff. I mean, I, a market that is just going in 15% directions and 10% directions like it's nothing every minute of the day, that is going to continue. And I, I guess we, let's just all try to take advantage of it and not, not go back to doing things the way we were doing in the past and make the world better. So we're out.